So there might be a million lines of data, but if something's being automatically updated yeah. and no one's really paying attention to it and the people who are looking after it don't really understand it, yes, it's very possible given the kind of antiquated nature of Excel that something like this would happen. But I think it speaks to a, a slightly wider issue, Go on. which is that most of these projects are outsourced to consultants and other advisory firms, which I don't think is a bad thing because, you know, many of my friends work in, in, in consultancies, for example, they have specific expertise that they can lend to the government um, or to government agencies to help with things like this. I think the no. problem is, is twofold. The first one is often you may have people in the civil service dealing with projects like this who don't quite understand them. And I think that these teething problems that have happened are to be expected. But Matt Hancock saying we're going to have a world-leading test and trace system doesn't really allow for those teething problems because people say, well, you said it was going to be the greatest ever, and now something like this has happened, so how do the two things tally? So mm -hmm. I think that's really the wider issue that by setting the scene so poorly at the beginning and setting everybody's expectations so high, when something like this happens, you don't really have anything to fall back on. Mm. Whereas for me, if Matt Hancock had said, we need oh. to ramp up testing and tracing in the fastest way yes. possible that's never been done before. And we're going to try our best. We're going to throw resources at it. We're going to get, actually, one of my friends has worked on this specific project. We're going to get really smart people yeah. at really smart consultancies to help. But bear in mind, there will be a few teething problems and you know, we'll try and minimise them, but if they are, we'll try and explain it. And, and this an um, earlier an earlier caller mentioned Brexit in this context. I don't I don't expect you to, but I I was a bit sceptical. But listening to you, it is this idea that they they were propelled to power by this ludicrous sort of revivification of empire and this nonsense about English exceptionalism and this idea that we don't need anyone because we're all so brilliant. And maybe that did actually inform this absolutely bonkers commitment to being world beating when all the evidence was that we were not world beating sam well i i i kind of agree i mean i yeah. think i think it's good to aim to be world beating well, of course I it's good to aim to no be world. Reason, it's not good to claim no that you're world beating when you've just tripped correct. over your own shoelaces correct and i think you know i think that's the biggest issue because for me like matt hancock his job it's not really to run the health department. He's not day-to-day -day in the operational nitty-gritty of things. That's what the permanent secretary is for. Mm. That's what the mm. kind of, you know, Simon Stevens is for. He's a health expert. Matt Hancock's role is to inspire confidence in the health service. I think that's really his only job. And to be honest, I think that's really Boris Johnson's job. I think the, the kind yeah, of figureheads of government, nicely put. Their, role is, their role is to inspire confidence. And, you know, full disclosure, I voted for the Conservative Party. I think sure. the, the, the policies align uh, many of the policies align with with my view of of the world. I think economically, but equally. For, for the record, know, um, I didn't vote for the Conservative Party. I voted I for that. my for my local Labour MP. But but of course, in the in the hands of the other cults um, around at the moment, I am personally responsible for Boris Johnson being Prime Minister. So just in the interest of full disclosure, I'll, I'll get that one out there now. Sorry, Sam. Carry on. Yeah. No. Well, I, well, I think that's interesting. And you know, I I am a member of the the Jewish community, so I, I couldn't vote. You know, I couldn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn. I know this call's not about that. I'm not trying to bring it no, up. You're welcome is, to. Let me say what you I want. thought that it was an exciting. Uh, you know, I thought that it potentially, I mean, A, it was the only option I had, but yep. B, you kind of want to have faith in... You've got um, to have faith. ...in the party you vote for, but I have been so disappointed. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, I think I, I like what Keir Starmer said at the beginning of coronavirus, which is he said, I know it's not an easy job to respond to what's going on. No one's done it before. Mm. I'm sure there will be mistakes, and I'm not going to stand here every time the government makes a mistake and say, well, I would have done better, I would have done this, because, you know, A, it's not true, and B, I don't think that's particularly helpful. No, it was but quite grown up, really, wasn't it? It's quite grown up, but the government have, have instead, like, taken that kind of initial, we're all in this together, um, consensus view of the country, and instead made wildly unrealistic proclamations that only set you up to fail. You know, my dad taught me when I was much younger, 
But it worked with the, no, 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 I mean, with no reference to your previous voting record, it worked in the referendum. And in a way, and we disagree about this, for me, it worked in the election as well. They, 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 they do get away with it in the short term, you see. Well, I think that's because they don't actually have to deliver on what they say. Precisely. So, they just need you know, to deliver sack loads of votes, you see. In, in the manifesto, it's very bad. You know, I think, to be honest, a lot of parties do this, where you promise a lot, manifestos, often they're not costed or they're not... Yeah, you're right. You that know, is much of them. But the referendum was unique. The referendum was... Yes, was yeah, I mean, look, I, you know, I, 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 I voted for Remain. You know, the referendum... Uh, I can tell. Put, you know, put that, put, put that to one side. I, yeah. think, I think that... Actually, when you have to deliver on short-term operational, yeah, it's a completely results, different skill set, isn't it? It's completely a completely different, different skill set, and you have to underpromise, overdeliver, underpromise, and and the government haven't done that. No, they've overpromised and, and, and underdelivered. God, you're very correct. good, actually. Correct. Yeah, bang on. Um, twelve billion so, quid, apparently. This this test and trace system. Uh, if I said to you, twelve billion pounds, we'll be using Microsoft Excel. What would you say to me? I, I would say I've used it for much more simple tasks than collating millions of data points and it was rubbish for that so i probably wouldn't go ahead and use it for this <laughs> do you know i can't wait to read dominic cummings's doctored blog when he goes back and rewrites the bit saying excel would obviously be absolutely awful for this kind of thing and then pretends that he'd written it at the time but until that happy day dawn sam i'm incredibly grateful for your contribution